In this video, we will be showing you how to remove, clean, and inspect your low pressure and high pressure regulators for your Scout Epic air rifle. First, we need to make sure that the air rifle is degassed. We're going to turn off our tank using the Scout air rifle tool or a 564th Allen key inserted into one of the holes in the on and off. Flipping over to the other side, we're going to turn the release valve counterclockwise and watching all gauges drop to zero. If a gauge does not show zero, you will want to discharge your rifle in a safe and clear direction. With all gauges reading zero, we can now unscrew the bottle from the rifle, making special care to pay attention that the on and off valve is attached to the bottle and the on and off tank assembly is unscrewing from the rifle. If we hear any air or bleeding while this is occurring, we wanna go ahead and stop. We wanna remove the wire form that holds in the regulator caps. Using a dental pick is helpful for this. Just pull it out and over the ledge. Removing your HBR is done with a 3 16th Allen key, or you can use your hands. This is a standard threaded Allen key, so you're going to be going counterclockwise again, lefty Lucy, to remove this cap. Once the cap's off, you will be able to see the main regulator spring and spring guide. Tilting the rifle up, those parts will fall out. Looking down into the regulator, you can now see the lower regulator piston. You'll want to reach in there with a pair of pliers and pull it out very carefully, not to mar the brass or any of the other components inside the regulator. There are two O-rings on this component, one on the side and one on the top. Looking down, we can see the tool face that we'll be engaging to remove this HPR. And then we're going to be using a 3-8 socket wrench or wrench driver in this case, to go ahead and remove the regulator body. Again, this is standard threading, so Lefty Lucy will take the regulator body out of the rifle. With it out, we can go now and set the rest of the rifle aside and take a look at our lower regulator components and regulator upper. We're going to take out the upper components or the poppet out of our regulator body by inserting the 3 16th Allen key into the top and that 3 8 socket wrench once again to the bottom and turning them apart. You'll notice the regulator cap uh, separating on the left hand side and that will be followed by the poppet and poppet spring. So pulling the regulator body away, we can now see the poppet and poppet spring. And then we all have the poppet and poppet spring, which separate. Finally, we have one more component inside the regulator body, which is the poppet seat. To access that, we'll need to remove the retaining O-ring that's around it, and then the seat itself. Using a dental pick, we want to reach down in and pull the O-ring out. Using that same dental pick, we're going to reach down again through the center of that face and go ahead and pull it up. You'll notice there's a small pocket that allows the dental pick to get underneath the poppet seat without damaging it. Looking here, we have our upper regulator components, our regulator body, and our lower regulator components. Because these aren't lubricated, we can go ahead and put them back together. Just a first shim and then our second shim our main regulator spring, and then spring guide. The regulator piston that we have here, we wanna make sure it is clean and free of debris, no mark, scratching, or anything else. Next, we wanna take a look at our regulator body. There's two bores, the lower bore and the upper bore. Both need to be clean and free of debris. There's three rings on the outside, which again, we're looking for undamaged and clean. Finally, our upper regulator components, you have our poppet spring, which we wanna make sure is straight and clean. Our poppet guide, which contains an O-ring. We wanna look up inside and make sure it's clean. And our poppet face. Finally, we're going to inspect the poppet shaft, the lower poppet shaft and the upper poppet shaft. We're looking for any damage, as well as taking a look at the O-ring there on the poppet face. 
it's important to note that if there is any damage to the poppet, you'll need to replace this entire component as it's not sold individually. Inspecting our lower components, uh, we want to make sure that the upper o-ring on the piston as well as the side o-ring on the piston are clean and uncut. And then we want to make sure that the dome on the spring guide and the base of the regulator piston are clean and unwired as well. When the regulator is assembled, the piston will ride on the stack somewhat like this. So you want to make sure both faces are clean and clear. Inspecting the regulator body, we want to check both sets of threads as well as fully inspecting each internal bore, looking for particles. All air from your rifle does pass through here, so there can be some dirt accumulation. Checking the three outer O-rings is going to make sure that we have no external leaks. And then we can look at inspecting the poppet itself. Looking at the main poppet shaft, we want to look for scratches, debris, etc. As well as inspecting the poppet face, we're looking for any type of scratches. We want the spring to be nice and straight and clean and for there to be no degrabbery up inside the poppet guide. Final seal to inspect up here is the one on the face of the poppet itself. Again, this needs to be perfectly clean and semi-rounded. Lubrication for the upper components is very simple. We want to start by lubricating the main shaft of the poppet. small amount of grease on this shaft and then without installing the spring we're going to go ahead and press that up into the piston guide a few times just to make sure that that o-ring is properly lubricated once that's done we can go ahead and redistribute the grease reinstall our poppet spring put it on our poppet guide and just give it a few tests for function make sure nothing's binding Installing our poppet seat, I find the easiest way is to use a Allen key to guide it down into the hole. Using the conical face up, we want to then get on the Allen key and slide it down into the regulator body. Looking down, you can see the conical face is still up and we're good to go there. So now we're going to take our O-ring, drop it into place. This is not necessarily a sealing O-ring, but it does need to absolutely be in the right location because it is compressed between the cap and the seat itself. With that o-ring in place we can now install our poppet assembly which is the poppet, the poppet spring, and cap. Starting this with your fingers you want to feel no resistance at least initially. After a few threads you'll feel some resistance as that spring engages and you want to take your 3 16 allen key along with your 3 8 socket wrench and snug up the upper regulator components. Before reinstalling the reg body into the body of the air rifle, you want to make sure that all three O-rings are properly lubricated. You want to put on enough grease to fill the grooves on either side of the o-ring as well as make sure the o-ring itself is coated however we don't want to fill any of the grooves or lands on either side of the o-ring with grease and we press down into the body you will feel a small click as the regulator body engages in the threads and you do not want to screw it down tight before that begins With the HPR installed, we can now reinstall our regulator piston. I'm going to take a small amount of grease and just grease the O-ring on the side of this piston. Uh, once again, just filling in the grooves, get it started in place with the tweezers, and then use my finger to fully seat it back down in. And reassemble our adjuster cap again on the side that does not have markings. We're going to go ahead and install our two shims. spring and the spring guide. 
inserting that into the regulator body, you will find a small amount of play. You want to work the cap around moving until you feel positive engagement with the threads. Do not force it. It should be a very easy turn, especially for the first couple rotations uh, before engaging that spring. So again, any resistance at all, you, you want to stop and make sure you're lined up. Removing the LPR is very similar. It's the cap itself, however, is counter threaded. So we'll want to turn it for clockwise to remove it. You'll notice a small O-ring in the cap that can stay there. Using a 5 16 socket wrench, we're going to reach down into the LPR body and unscrew the regulator body. Unlike the HPR, two components will remain in the body that will need to be removed separately. The LPR spring and the LPR piston will remain in the body after we remove the LPR's body. So we pull out the LPR and you can look down and you'll see the spring and piston. The spring itself will just fall out when tilted up. The piston will need to be removed with a pair of non-marring pliers. You'll want to reach down in, grab the piston itself, and pull out. Again, being very careful not to scratch the shaft of the piston or either O-ring. The final component to remove is the regulator seat carrier, which I'm going to press out using a cutoff Q-tip, again, to avoid any type of abrasion to the inside bore of the regulator. Pressing that out, you can pull it the rest of the way out of the top, and that stainless steel component is our regulator seat carrier. The regulator seat carrier has two tool faces. The top is a 732nd, and the bottom is a 564th. When you first start to disassemble the regulator seat carrier, you will notice that the threads are very tight uh, initially from the factory. This is because we do use a blue Loctite to keep these two components together. When reinstalling, you will want to clean these threads and reuse a blue or temporary ted thread locker uh, during a reinstall. Inside this component, you will find your reg seat. It'll either sit in the bottom component or fall out like it did in this case. I like to have it out and place it in the reg seat base. We want to inspect it for scratches, divots, or anything that might cause the seal not to hold. This one looks good, so now we want to go ahead and clean those threads before applying a small amount of Loctite to those threads. And then reassembling our reg seat carrier. When reassembling the reg seat carrier, you want to make sure that the components go together completely and firmly. There should be a line from the milling. However, there should be no discernible gap between the two components once everything's snug. With the carrier back together, we can look at our various components. You have your piston, your reg seat carrier, and your reg body. Finally, your reg adjuster with this O-ring inside. Lubrication is going to start by lubricating the singular O-ring on the outside of the reg seat carrier. In this case, just enough grease to coat that general area. The reg piston is lower seal will be lubricated again with just enough grease to cover the seal as well as the gaps on either side of the o-ring and finally the top LPR seal. With the piston greased we can then install our spring and our low pressure reg seat housing. We're going to then take this entire assembly and install it into the rifle body. The reason we're installing this assembly prior to the LPR body is an effort to make sure that the LPR piston goes all the way to the bottom of its pocket and sits flat 
at the base of its pocket without scratching the bore on its way down. So we're essentially going to be using the LPR carrier as a guide. We want to push that piston all the way down and flat against the base of the chamber. Then we're going to lubricate the outer O-rings on our LPR body. Again, just enough grease to cover the O-ring and fill the channels on either side. And we will be installing this low pressure regulated body using the narrow end towards the rifle. It will slip right over our reg seat carrier and down into the body. You want to press until you hear an audible click and then you can use your 5 16 socket wrench once again to snug it into the body. Careful again once again to make sure you are on threads and not cross threading either the reg seat the reg body or the body of the rifle itself. With that installed, we can now go ahead and put our adjuster cap back on. The O-ring which we mentioned that sits inside the cap is more of a bushing or a washer, so we want to make sure it's clean and clear debris, but it does not need lubrication. Remember this is a counter threaded cap, so in this case it is lefty tidy. So we're going to turn it to the left or counterclockwise in order to tighten it back on to the rifle. With both caps in place, we can now reinstall our wire form lock from the front over the lip that locks it into place. And you have completed the inspection and lubrication of both your regulators. Thank you for joining us.